All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Functional Aging Summit 2021. You can see Mark Middleton there in the Growing Boulder studio getting ready. Um, he's got quite a setup for us and presentation on tap. So I have to give a few introductory remarks before we get to Mark. I know everybody's excited about the keynote. This is the seventh annual Functional Aging Summit. Um, hard to believe this is the seventh time we've put this event on. We have over 470 people registered and I'd love to know what country, time zone, city or state you're tuning in from. We've got people from all around the world registered. So if you are in another country, please type that in the chat for us. Uh, would love to see that. that is one advantage of a virtual summit, Mark, is that people from literally every time zone country can tune in and attend. There's no travel requirements. So <laughs> I have to start by thanking our sponsors that have stuck with us. Uh, even with a virtual event, Kaiser has continued to be uh, a fantastic supporter of the Functional Aging Institute and the Functional know. Aging Summit. And <clears throat> they are our premier sponsor uh, again this year. And so we're gonna show a quick video from Kaiser as well as Age Performance. Uh, Paul Holbrook is a speaker and sponsor this year. But please visit our virtual expo if you haven't. We have Kaiser, Naboso, Curves, Nomly. It's a brand new sponsor this year. Uh, Nomly is an amazing success story in the fitness industry. Uh, Sumit came to a functional aging mastermind session and then came to the Functional Aging Summit in Albuquerque in 2019 and has now uh, launched a company serving the fitness industry. So please check that out. It's a really cool fitness software. Exercise Etc. is back again. Guy Andrews, Age Performance, Activate Brain and Body, and Urban Polling. So fantastic sponsorship support. Please go to their booth, check out um, what they have to offer. So I'm going to show a quick Kaiser uh, video before we get rolling. If you haven't typed in where you're tuning in from, would love to know that. Again, uh, country, city, state, time zone. So you can find these promo videos at the Kaiser booth. This is the Kaiser virtual booth. We're going to show the video with our board member, Paul Holbrook from Age Performance. So you're going to get to see a little taste of two of our sponsors. <clears throat> Well, I think the worst thing is if somebody looks at an individual and says, oh, they're frail. Frailty is under our control. Yes, of course, you have to work harder at 74. You have to work harder to stay even, but I'm not interested in staying even. I've always believed that you're only as old as you think you are. Society will try to drive you into ageism if it can. I think it's absolute garbage. That would be the number one thing of why I got them into this and why this exists is seeing the way older adults moved and then just not buying it. And so or at least having a question in my mind like something's not right with that. We can do better. I'm Paul Holbrook, um, owner and founder of Age Performance here in Salt Lake City, Utah. So the name Age Performance comes from optimizing our performance as we get older. 20% of what we see with aging is genetic but the other is just lifestyle habits. So, you know, you improve your nutrition, get into the right exercise program, you're gonna you know, limit the effects of aging. Exercising at my age is the fine balance between the physical uh, challenge and also making sure that I'm in as safe an environment as possible. I think the balance issue with seniors is the number one gripe. It's the number one thing that brings them down. It's why they, they stroll around like this. I mean, I am in personal training because it makes everything else in my life possible. I read better, I play the piano better, I think better, I write better, I do everything better when I'm in shape. Power and speed is the name of the game for this market. And that's why Kaiser is the equipment to use. We've been using Kaiser for about 15 years now and it's been incredibly safe for us and incredibly effective at the same time. With free weights, when I come down, there's that weight that just goes down. But when you do it with the Kaiser, you still get the weight. You get all that, but you just don't get that kind of jarring effect. The Kaiser equipment gave me that sense of, of uh, smoothness, a, a range of motion in which I could go through that continuous range 
and come back again without the jolt of uh, traditional exercise equipment. You know, our average age clientele is roughly 70. So we have some 40, 50 year olds, and we have some 80, 90 year olds. I can put everyone in that age group on there. And we all know how this equipment comes and goes anyway, you know, and I think Kaiser's been around long enough and proven, you know, what it is and why it is. I would not want to work out on equipment other than Kaiser. Kaiser allows me to do my work, allowing our clients not to fall into that, allowing our clients to um, move with mobility, with ease, and with vitality, and with a zest for life, because they're able to move better physically and do better. So I see my overall health improve. My strength is better. And uh, you know, I was helping my son a couple months ago uh, relay a stone patio, and I was handling the same stones he was in the same way 35 years old. I honestly feel right now that I am probably as physically fit now as I've been in my whole life, which I know sounds odd to say at 74, but that's the way I feel about it. You can be a 75-year-old woman, and you can say, I want to pull down as much as Rick is pulling down, and I really am. I'm pretty, pretty competitive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it goes out of here, too. Yeah. All right, again, thanks so much to Kaiser for sponsoring this event. Um, I'm now excited to introduce Mark. Um, Mark, I've asked you to unmute while I introduce you. I think you've got to hit a an unmute button. I know you guys are working on some audio stuff. If you're not familiar with Mark Middleton, um, you must be new to the Functional Aging Institute. Here is his book, Growing Boulder, by the same name as his company. Uh, Mark is a media entrepreneur, television journalist, author, athlete, documentary filmmaker, motivational speaker, activist, consultant, um, and great friend of the Functional Aging Institute. He's a mul multiple Emmy award-winning broadcaster. Uh, that's pretty cool right there, Mark. Um, he's a three-time UPI Sportscaster of the Year. So that's exciting for any of us uh, sports folks. He's covered three Olympics as a network journalist. And Mark is a seven-time Masters Swimming World Record holder, a 10-time U.S. Masters Swimming National <laughs> Champion. I could go on and on. Um, but let's please welcome Mark Middleton to the stage. Mark, I'm going to hop off of uh, video and turn it over to you. Thanks so much, Mark. No, thank you, Dan. Uh, it, it's a great honor and a privilege. I'm very excited to, to chat with all of you folks today. Um, and, and as advertised, I do want to talk to you uh, about you, about living a longer, happier, healthier, and more engaged life. But I also want to talk about your business, at least to the extent that I'm able about lessons that have been learned from the pandemic. And I wanna talk about the messaging that I do know from experience will work with your target client. Um, what's happening today and tomorrow is really the perfect example uh, of moving forward despite the obvious challenges. It's the perfect example of leveraging technology, of creating broad messages like the one that I'm going to present, but also very targeted information and education around specific topics and interest. It's the perfect example of how to create community and how to interact. And the team from FAI folks hasn't just phoned it in. Uh, they are all in, in terms of creating something that is slick and meaningful and impactful. And to get started, if you will, allow me to talk for just a couple of minutes about my business and, and why Dan and Cody believe that that qualifies me to stand up here and share with you what I'm about to share. Uh, I know that not everyone knows about Growing Boulder and where we are going, so let me start with a new uh, and short Growing Boulder brand video. This is 2021. People are living longer than ever. They're living, going, doing, creating, connecting, loving, and giving it their all. This is a life stage that has never existed before and the blessing of our modern era. Our mission is simple, to become the world's most influential 50 plus lifestyle brand by inspiring men and women of all ages to believe that the rest of their life can be the best of their life. We're telling the stories of ordinary people living extraordinary lives. 
We believe that a moment at 80 is just as valuable as a moment at 18. We're honest, thoughtful, intelligent, inspiring, and entertaining. Join us and find your tribe. Growing Boulder, the voice of a new age. Well, you don't need me to tell you that the pandemic has been beyond tough. Uh, 600,000 lives lost here in the U.S. alone. Uh, worldwide, it has pushed hundreds of millions into poverty. It has bankrupted families, destroyed businesses. That said, from a business standpoint, the challenge is almost always the opportunity, particularly in a business like yours and mine. Uh, let's just be grateful that we're not in the, the travel and the hospitality business. So we, Growing Boulder, leaned into this challenge uh, from day one. We sent everybody home. We tried several different collaboration and streaming tools. We immediately began streaming live interviews with policymakers, with the mayors of major cities, uh, with thought leaders in caregiving and insurance and healthcare and personal finance. We streamed those interviews to Facebook and YouTube because we wanted to be of service. We wanted to have a voice at a time when everyone was looking for information. It was an opportunity to make some real connections. And once we were comfortable with that, we launched a weekly online show that we called Growing Boulder Now that we began pushing live to Facebook, uh, to YouTube, and eventually to Twitch. And I wanna talk more about Twitch in a moment. We intended to do this for a month or two, but we are still doing it, 62 shows now and counting. We then doubled down on free online summits that we're uh, suddenly more relevant than ever. The power of prehabilitation, the art of caregiving, the power of creative engagement, and an online version of our live event, Launchpad to What's Next. In fact, we like that concept so much that we pitched a pilot for a new weekly commercial television show that's called What's Next. Uh, I have to tell you, it wasn't easy, uh, but we have cobbled together network affiliates in every market in Florida, and we now have a deal to produce and air 36 new episodes over the next 18 months in 11 Florida cities. It's a model that we plan to scale to other states as we expand a relationship that we have with a national insurance company. Uh, the first episodes aired just last week. And while the pandemic has made it more difficult than ever, we produced and we've delivered 10 new episodes of Growing Boulder, which is our flagship program. It's our seventh season on public broadcasting stations. In fact, it's now airing on nearly 300 PBS stations nationwide. We found a way to move forward in an environment uh, in which nobody really was producing anything new. The challenge, once again, became the opportunity. The pandemic has been responsible for accelerating many trends, and I think you can look at this as good news if you want to. We've all known for a while that socialization is critical to our health, uh, it's critical to our well being as we age. In fact, multiple studies have now shown that isolation from quarantining and social distancing have had some serious negative impacts on the mental and physical health in older people. And, you know, we're talking about anxiety, depression, poor sleep, low physical activity, and, and even suicide ideation has exploded, which brings us to Twitch. Uh, we've been fascinated with the power of streaming and the ability to create communities and provide social engagement. Uh, the technology has become relatively easy to use and while there are gamers and musicians who do stream to audiences of tens of thousands of people, you know, we wondered what if a quilter could stream and engage with an audience of just five or 10? What if a 65 year old masters athlete could share training tips with others who are interested? What if we produced the first intergenerational live streaming program in which we would bring together a younger creator or maker and an older creator or maker to discuss their shared passions from different point of views? What if we could create the world's first 50 plus social gaming initiative? And so we did.
Growing Bolder, the world's number one active lifestyle brand for adults 50 and over, is joining forces with the world's number one live streaming platform to smash a few stereotypes. Growing Bolder on Twitch brings together younger and older creators, makers, and influencers to discuss their shared passions, whether it's gaming, music, art, cooking, running, you name it, we're going to stream it. If you want to have fun, we are there for it. If you want to get serious, let's talk. Social issues, racial inequality, sexuality, meditation, motivation, fitness or finance, the Growing Boulder channel streams with thought-provoking intergenerational conversation. Growing Boulder on Twitch features live episodes of Growing Boulder Now, inspirational Emmy award-winning features, and live special events like Boulder X social gaming and esports competitions. Growing Boulder on Twitch, it's not about age, it's about attitude. And we've already started, in fact, yesterday, man, I'm sorry, I am a little quick on the trigger here. Yesterday, we had our first live tournament. It was the Boulder X Among Us iGen. Intergenerational teams from all over the country playing Among Us. I hosted the event along with Matt Hafey, who is a Grammy-nominated rock star and a big-time streamer on Twitch. We hosted the broadcast at Full Sail University Fortress, which is the largest collegiate esports arena in the world. It was a live 90-minute event that smashed stereotypes, and we think it's going to open the door to some interesting future possibilities. Uh, I mentioned that our show on PBS uh, stations is, is now in its seventh season. We've also got the show on commercial affiliates, but ultimately, we want to own the distribution channel so we don't have to rely on anyone else for carriage. So, over the past eight months during the pandemic, we've been building our own OTT, an over-the-top network, kind of our own Netflix, if you will. We've just launched it. For now, it's free. Uh, and of course, uh, it will be of no value to us at all if we can't market it, if we can't build an audience, if we can't aggregate eyeballs. But if we can, uh, this is going to be transformational. Uh, and yes, there is a sports and fitness channel and a health and wellness channel and an arts and creativity channel and many other theme related channels where we can develop a more targeted audience uh, and include appropriate content from our different partners. We began making inspirational memes for social media years ago. We've shared many of them with, with Dan and Cody. Uh, we get more feedback on these than just about anything that we do. So we doubled down and we launched something we call the Bold Start. It's an early morning email that really is nothing more than a single meme. It's a 15 second read with an incredible opening rate and a list of subscribers that's now growing rapidly. Over the years, we've been asked uh, thousands of times to, about offering a subscription to our meme library or, or perhaps uh, to purchase posters. The problem for us was always copyright. Even Getty images that we license can't be monetized. And many of the photos that were given to us for our stories or magazines, we hadn't cleared for other uses, so we didn't do it. Now, however, everything we produce, we own. They are our own designs, our own photos, so we'll soon be making framed copies, very cool art, available for purchase. And not only did we continue publishing our 100-page quarterly print magazine during the pandemic, we doubled down on digital. We launched a 42-page monthly version called the Growing Boulder Digital Digest. Here's an example of that. And what we're doing with our Digital Digest partners is we're offering them the opportunity to have their logo and a message on the cover. You can see it down at the very bottom of that. Something like you're receiving this as a gift from. And then inside, that partner can contribute one page of editorial content uh, and a full page ad if they want. So basically, we're now producing one complete P uh, PDF. We add a cover banner, swap out two pages on the inside for their custom content. It's easy for us. It costs next to nothing. So what we're doing is we're giving it to them for free in exchange for them direct mailing it to their entire client or member or customer list. Why are we doing this? Well, because we're now on track to have distribution of over 2 million by the end of the year. And on all of these pages, we've started uh, 
a few new features that we think are win-wins, and one of them I really love. It's a spotlight on influencers, men and women who have social media followings and interesting passions. Uh, it's great, diverse content for us. It gives them a boost, and invariably, uh, they want to share that exposure with their followers, so it serves as a warm introduction to Growing Boulder and what we're doing. And I got to tell you, we got tired of using the very same stock photos of older adults that everyone else uses. You've no doubt seen this woman everywhere. Uh, in fact, in our office, we call her the stock lady. <clears throat> this woman, folks, does it all. She's a doctor, a grandmother, a wife, a hiker, a teacher, an entrepreneur, a single lady, a lesbian, a caregiver, a financial planner, a runner, a weightlifter, a personal trainer. Her range is unbelievable. Most stock photos are either overused like hers or they're just plain silly. So what we did is we went out and hired our own photographer and we're now building our own library of photos for our stories and for our memes. These are our photos. Our photographer took them. Uh, this is how important we think that differentiating ourselves is and how important that I think it is for all of you guys. Uh, if you were in Albuquerque two years ago for the Functional Aging Summit there, uh, you know it was a great one. If you weren't, you missed something special. Uh, and you know that we were there as well. Uh, it's because I've been fascinated with the National Senior Games for several years. And it's not really about the fact uh, that it's a competition. It, it, it's about the fact that it's a community. It's men and women in 25 different sports, everything from former Olympians to complete beginners, all abilities, all disabilities, all making the same statement, and that is if you want to keep moving, you got to keep moving. So what did we do this year? Well, here's some breaking news. Please don't share this, but I'm going to share it with you. We are going to announce on Monday, June 15th, in just a few days, that Growing Boulder is now the official media partner of the National Senior Games Association. We've acquired exclusive rights to create national content on and about the National Senior Games, which will be next May in Fort Lauderdale. We have the exclusive rights to stream events, to sell sponsorships to complete sports, uh, swimming, track and field, pickleball, or even to individual events. So if you want to sponsor the women's 100 to 104 year old 100 meter dash, we can package that up for you. Uh, here's a little more now about why we went with this partnership. Here's some news that can and will change your life if you let it. There really is a fountain of youth, kind of. Regular physical exercise and what's generally referred to as master sports, organized competition for older adults like the National Senior Games are changing everything we thought we knew about aging and vitality. Now, before I go any further, let me say that you don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to be in good shape. You just have to want to improve or maintain your health and well-being for as long as you can. So here's the deal. You know all those studies that say we lose strength and muscle mass and bone density and flexibility as we age? Well, they were all done with groups of sedentary adults, couch potatoes. The explosion in master sports has provided an entirely new group of test subjects. And what we're now learning is that physical decline isn't a given. We can actually gain strength and bone density and muscle mass. That's why Growing Boulder covers master sports whenever and wherever we can. And here's the truth. We don't go to report results because to us, it's not about who wins. It's about Vivian Stansel, who actually finished last in her race. Vivian is visually impaired and was scared to death of the water until she decided to learn to swim, and it gave her confidence that she never knew she had. It's about Dottie Gray, who came back from a broken hip at the age of 93 to compete in the 100-meter dash. It's about the countless men and women from 50 to over 100 who are losing weight and battling back from cardiac disease, cancer, and every other kind of physical, emotional, and mental disability imaginable. It's about benefiting from not only the movement, but also the social engagement, the community that surrounds every sport, because as we age, community is immunity. Social connection actually improves our immune system and decreases the risk of dementia and depression. 
So what is the fountain of youth? Well, it never will be found in a pill or a dip in some magical spring. The closest thing there will ever be to a fountain of youth is physical exercise, social engagement, and the pursuit of a shared passion. All three come together in master sports, and it's why the fastest growing group in nearly every organized sport consists of men and women over the age of 50. So now you know why we love organized sports for older adults, and now you know why we don't care who wins, because in truth, everyone does. Fourteen thousand athletes in that one event, the largest multi-sport qualifying event in the world, bigger even than the Olympics. In fact, I think Dan's father competed uh, in Albuquerque. And, you know, for us, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Every one of those 14,000 athletes has a story, uh, a story that can and should inspire the people that you're talking to about the benefits of, of a healthy lifestyle. Uh, and you know, I have talked to this group before about the content franchise we're building around the health wealth connection because the two are inextricably linked. You can't improve your overall health and well being without also improving your overall financial health. Uh, because here's the truth healthcare costs will be our biggest single expense moving forward as we age. So we believe that the number one investment that everyone can make, that anyone can make and should make right now, uh, is the one that won't cost you anything but will deliver the greatest overall returns in the years ahead. And that is simply improving your overall health and well being. Uh, and that is a message that resonates with every good financial planner. Because in reality, the best financial planners these days are becoming more like life co coaches. So over the past year, during the pandemic, we put some focus into finding a partner in the financial services industry, and we landed a great one. Recently, we signed a deal with the Alliance for Lifetime Income. And what we loved about this group is that they are actually an educational nonprofit that produces great consumer facing content. Uh, so we get great stuff. This is content we'd want to produce anyways. They do it really, really well. But here's the deal. Uh, they're funded by over 20 of the largest financial service firms in the country. So now we not only get great content, we have organic natural exposure to and connection with companies that we'd also like to develop a relationship with. Uh, because as we age, life becomes more about experience and less about things, we began laying the groundwork for a Growing Boulder Adventures initiative because there is, as you guys know, an incredible amount of pent-up demand for travel. Uh, many of us, though, are still wary about planes and international travel and hotel rooms, so we've focused the past few months on the area of RV travel, RV sales, RV rentals, and RV share sites. I, I didn't even know there are I, RV companies that are RV versions of Airbnb, which makes perfect sense to me. If you want to buy an RV, why would you not try one out? Um, so we're working with them to create content that would be great for our platform, would espouse their message, uh, and, and would be a revenue stream for us. Now, all of this activity that I've just described to you was sparked by a deal that we signed with a Medicare company after the pandemic began. Uh, we have been targeting the private Medicare industry for several years because it is booming. 10,000 of us are turning 65 every day, and the profit margins on Medicare Advantage insurance are the highest in the insurance industry, which makes it extremely competitive. And that means that everybody is looking for a way to differentiate, uh, differentiate uh, their coverage beyond uh, a $5 difference in copay. And we believe that Growing Boulder can be and will ultimately become the most valuable differentiator in what is a very big industry. Uh, I've had a note on my whiteboard in my office uh, for more than a year now, probably two years. Uh, it says, never stop building and leveraging momentum. And this is what has driven all of this in this past year, the ability to create and sustain momentum, which is critical to success in any business. Momentum creates opportunity, it grows revenue, and it increases market penetration, uh, which is one of the first lessons of the pandemic, uh, learning how to build momentum. And if you Google it, you will see there are dozens of books written about it. To me, momentum is about having vision and then the willingness to take smart and strategic risks.
task uh, to try. And if you fail, fail quickly and then try again. It's not about chasing butterflies. You have to know who you are and you have to be able to see connections. You have to be able to see pathways to new opportunity. Of course, we all know this. The, uh, the bad news is that the pandemic has shut down thousands of fitness studios, gyms, uh, even national change. The fitness industry uh, has lost, uh, I think, close to 500,000 jobs in the past year. And although it might not feel like it right now, there is good news. You guys are absolutely in the right field. There's been a major demographic shift underway for decades. This is the change in the population from 60 years ago over the next 40 years. What was described by demographers forever as a population pyramid with a lot of younger people on the bottom and fewer older people is now a population column. This is why you're in the right business. The good news is that challenging times also create opportunity. Thanks to the pandemic, the power in your industry has shifted into the hands of trainers. Social media connectivity, accelerated by the pandemic, has facilitated direct connection with clients outside of the big brands. You do not need to be tied to a well-known brand to succeed. And yeah, I'll give you, a physical location is an advantage, but it's no longer a necessity. While actual face-to-face -face interaction with clients is a differentiator, it is no longer an absolute necessity. All of this to say that the future for all of us is increasingly digital. If you can build a loyal following and a digital platform to connect and engage on, you can build your own fitness empire. Uh, as we've all seen, the pandemic has accelerated trends that were already underway. Uh, telehealth uh, is now exploding. Everybody has learned how easy it is, how efficient it is to uh, engage in telehealth and telemedicine. You know, restaurants that weren't doing carry out learned very quickly that they needed to do it. Those that couldn't make that change are probably no longer in business. Businesses are learning that remote workers can in fact get stuff done. Colleges had to keep moving forward. Uh, they doubled down on online classes. All of these things existed before, but never to the extent that they do now. Uh, and make no mistake, we are never going back. We will only continue to move forward when it comes to the digital delivery of what we do. Uh, so you need to be thinking about diversification. Uh, FAI is a great example. Uh, these guys deliver that, new classes, new certifications all the time, nutrition, meditation, balance, Tai Chi, you know it, uh, you name it, and these guys are going there. You need to connect in every way that you can. It doesn't make any difference. Zoom, YouTube, Instagram Live, Facebook, Twitch, TikTok, try it all. Live videos, tape videos, online courses, online challenges. Growth mindset is what we all have to adapt. We gotta be willing to try, and if it works, keep doing more of it. If it doesn't, do something different. Uh, health has become a bigger priority uh, in the wake of the pandemic. Uh, as, as we all know, consumers have embraced home fitness options. I mean, Peloton has exploded. So you have to help your clients, the people that you're going after, you have to help them discover those benefits. You have to represent yourself as an ally uh, in their quest for in-home fitness solutions. Uh, and that, that takes a lot of work. And one of the keys, one of the things we've always talked about at Growing Boulder is repurposing. We are all content producers today. And you have to become very adept at repurposing content, using it on different franchises, on multiple channels, live videos, tape videos, online courses, all of the things we just talked about. If you can create one piece of content and put it on multiple ch channels, you can build a platform and you can build your business. Uh, you guys have all the power. You don't need the big corporate fitness brand to succeed anymore. Literally today, if you have a following, if you have a phone, if you have a digital platform to connect and engage your followers, you don't need anybody else. The real power in your industry uh, is now squarely in your hands. It's in the hands of trainers, but you have to be able to clearly articulate your brand. You have to create great content and you got to develop a great marketing plan. You don't need the middleman of a big fitness brand anymore. You can own your own clients. You are the industry. Uh, 
So the takeaway here is get off your heels, uh, lean in, develop a growth mindset, um, find ways to connect with people, um, expand your partnerships. What you have to offer our aging population right now is more important than anything. In fact, I believe that your industry should be making more money than big pharma. And just Wednesday, what is it, two days ago, I interviewed a guy by the name of Dr. James Hicks. He's a professor of ecology and evolutionary biology at the University of California in Irvine. Uh, and this guy has designed, and he now teaches a class that's called Exercise as Medicine, and it examines why physical activity actually works better for us than pills. He has the research that proves that exercise not only improves the quality of our life, uh, it compresses our morbidity, and it actually alters or reverses the trajectory of cancer and other diseases. In fact, exercise oncology is now booming. UCLA, Harvard, Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, many others now practice exercise or now prescribe exercise uh, as part of cancer treatment. Uh, there was a recent study that showed that breast cancer patients who walk briskly for just three hours a week after they receive standard treatment reported 32% better outcomes, a success rate that was better than most of the drugs. So, so the question, I guess, is how might my interview with Dr. Hicks lead to a new partnership for Growing Boulder? The honest answer is I have no idea at this point. Uh, for now, though, it gives us great consumer-facing content. Uh, it gives us a great interview from an expert talking about a subject that should be of interest to every healthcare organization in America, and we have the real people content to support it. And as we all know, it is content that drives partnerships. It is content that drives engagement. Case in point, this is Susan Helmrich. Uh, at 21 years old, uh, Susan was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of cancer. It led to multiple surgeries. Uh, she lost her entire reproductive system and most of her lymph nodes. And in the decades since, she has had major bouts with pancreatic cancer and lung cancer. In fact, doctors removed half of her pancreas, part of her bowel, her stomach, her gallbladder, her bile duct. One of her lungs was removed and her entire digestive tract was rewired. And through it all, she swam as painful as it was, and she's told us it was excruciating, she swam. It was exercise that kept her alive. And she says that better than any of us could. Today, Susan is 65. Uh, she's a health and wellness coach. She's an epidemiologist. She's got a master's degree from Harvard and a PhD from UC Berkeley. And as smart as she is, the thing she knows above all else is that exercise kept her alive. So let's do get to the messaging. Um, what I would love to share with you today, because it can change your life, and what I think that you should share with your clients, <clears throat> because I know these messages resonate, and I know that they can change their life, which, yeah, it's gonna make you look pretty good. Uh, and job one for all of us, you know, this is, this is my soapbox. This is what I talk about <clears throat> more than anything else. And job one is that we have to change our belief system about aging. We have to understand that we have all been lied to about what's possible. We have to embrace the fact that we live in a youth-obsessed culture that devalues every moment beyond what it considers to be our prime. Everything bad that happens to us as we age, the normal narrative would say is directly associated with aging itself, not with sedentary lifestyle, not with a lack of exercise, not with poor nutrition, not with low socialization, not with years of unhealthy behavior. You know, that's BS. What we all have to understand is that what the mind believes the body embraces. Our psychology drives our physiology. When we ingest this ageist crap, uh, we are host to a virulent uh, ageist pathogen uh, that only grows more powerful as we age. And our personal belief system is either the pathway through which that pathogen enters or it's our defense system against it. If we can change our belief system about aging, we can, in fact, change the trajectory of our lives. This is not my opinion. This is fact. Exercise, exercise, exercise. That's the magic bullet. 
Here's a message that will resonate. There is a direct connection between age and serious COVID disease. However, all of these studies coming out now, fit 70 year olds had fewer incidents of serious disease and quicker recoveries from COVID than did unhealthy 45 year olds. Being fit, having a strong immune system saves people's lives and it improves the quality of our lives. These are the messages that resonate and messages that all of us should be pushing out on social media. We have got to understand and promote uh, the power of social connection. Um, I talked a lot about this in Albuquerque two years ago. Doctors are talking about it. Healthcare providers are talking about it. And you know what? They are talking about it now more than ever. 36 million Americans currently live alone. Uh, that accounts for 28% of all U.S. households. That meant little uh, to no social interaction for a year. You need to figure out a way to put a focus on community even while you're building virtual fitness classes. And I think that means, which is what I think, you guys know, uh, I think that means um, that you gotta keep the classes small. You gotta keep them intimate. Uh, you've gotta make it a two-way conversation. It can't just be you delivering information. It, it's got to be the group hanging out, socializing. If you can do that, that's gonna be one of the big keys moving forward. Uh, we have got to leverage our two greatest fears. This, these are messages that resonate, and, and, um, and there has been a change. What was previously our number one fear is now number two. Our number one fear right now, recent study by the RAND Corporation says that the number one fear of older Americans is loss of independence, specifically living in a nursing home, and why not? I mean, nursing homes had a really, really difficult time during the pandemic. Nobody wants to go into nursing care. We want to remain independent. Uh, there is no question that the pandemic is now reshaping the way that we care for the elderly. It has prompted families to avoid nursing homes, to keep their loved ones in their own homes uh, for rehabilitation and other care. The nursing home industry lost $34 billion in revenue 1,800 closures or mergers due to COVID. That's the bad news. The good news is it's creating an entirely new market of people who are not going to nursing homes, who are at home and who need some sort of programs uh, to help them stay healthy, to help them stay mobile. Uh, and now number two on the list, used to be number one, is running out of money before we run out of time. We're all afraid that we're going to outlive our money and then what happens? Which is why we talk a lot about the health wealth connection again. Which is why we believe at Growing Boulder that the number one investment that we can all make, the number one investment that every one of us should make is the one investment that cost us nothing. And that is simply improving our lifestyle, positive lifestyle modification. That will make whatever retirement money you have, whatever savings you have, it will make it last longer. Uh, it's a legitimate fear because as we age, healthcare costs will be the biggest single uh, expense. Healthcare costs threaten to bankrupt nearly every one of us, and we're all aware of that. So uh, you, you need to talk to people when you're doing your marketing about the health wealth connection you can help them avoid running out of money uh, before they run out of time. All right, um, we have to recognize uh, and we have to embrace uh, the extreme diversity in older adults. Uh, the healthcare system is, is really, really bad at this in general. Um, they still use an ages shorthand to diagnose and treat, whether it's uh, over-treating or under-treating, whether it's overdosing medicine or underdosing exercise. Uh, in today's world, whether you're in healthcare, uh, whether you're in fitness to some extent, whether you're in travel or retail, uh, I can tell you this. If you have seen one 85-year-old, you have seen one 85-year-old, meaning they're all different. Uh, people have the ability to do more 
than most of us think. So we have to stop applying general age-based characteristics to individuals. We have to eliminate age as the primary consideration in how you train older adults. Now, yeah, I get that there are dangers, many valid considerations when it comes to older adults and protecting them from injury, but don't immediately default to age when it comes to the type of training or treatment or the allocation of fitness resources because we see it every single day. More and more uh, is possible. I think this, this graphic uh, represents how wildly diverse older adults are. Uh, the guy on the left is 70 years old, uh, and, and looking at him, I would say that the odds are pretty good that he's going to experience a decade of disease and disability uh, before he passes away about a year short of his 80th birthday because that's the current life expectancy in this country for, for a man. The 90-year-old uh, was lucky to live to 90, but maybe a better question is, was he really lucky? Because it's not about the length of our life, it's about the quality of our life. Now, the guy on the right, that's 96-year-old John Course, who went water skiing on his 95th birthday and then celebrated with a couple of cocktails uh, at a fancy restaurant with his kids. This is John at a big swimming meet when he was 94 years old. John got COVID when he was 96. And although he was hospitalized for eight days, he beat it. He returned home. He was swimming again. He was socializing with his family and friends for months when he suddenly died from a cardiac event. Here's the truth. John lived active decades beyond normal life expectancy all the time with a serious heart condition, with arthritis, with compressed disc, and on and on. If he was a normal person, he'd have been on a couch, he would have been immobile, he would have been in a wheelchair, and he probably would have died in his 70s, but he kept moving. John worked out with a trainer three times a week. In the end, he became a poster boy for compressed morbidity, which is something we should all aspire to. It's something that all of your clients should know about. It's something you should talk about. Uh, the fact that extending the length of our life is great, but only if those years are quality years. The name of the game is not just living longer, it's dying shorter. It's compressing the uh, period of frailty, of disease, uh, of disability and decline at the end of our lives. I mean, who wants to live to 100 if the last 20 years are in a bed hooked up to a machine? Conversely, who doesn't want to live to 100 if uh, everything uh, but their final couple of days are filled with love and passion, a sharp mind and decent health? And that's exactly what John Course's life was like. He went down in a hurry, uh, but he lived every moment of his life. You know, it's, it's popular to, to talk about our primary care provider these days. We have to. It, it's how insurance works. It's one of the biggest sales points in private Medicare plans. Is my doctor in your plan? I think we have to get the message out there, uh, all of us together, that we are all our own primary care provider. It's up to us to make the kind of lifestyle choices that will facilitate our health and well-being. There's not a doctor in the world who can make us exercise. There's not a doctor in the world that's gonna make me improve my diet or engage socially. And yet that's exactly what's needed. It all comes down to personal responsibility. Uh, so how do we get that message across? Well, we believe in the power of example. At Growing Boulder, we call it the someone like me effect. That's how you convince people that more is possible. That's how you convince people that your services are value. By having a well-crafted story. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. And then let your clients, let your success stories do all the talking. That's the someone like me effect because example has more followers than reason. It's when we can see ourselves and others that the switch goes off, that belief systems are transformed. You can tell an inactive little old lady that she can still have a social life and she can go dancing and she'll just roll her eyes at you until you show her someone like her who was stuck on a couch alone before working out, before joining your fitness group and now she's dancing on Wednesdays uh, and she's bowling on Fridays. All right, back to our event yesterday to underscore the importance of story. 
We produced, and I mean this sincerely, what has to be the highest quality production ever for a game of Among Us. It's a simple social deduction game that you can play on your iPhone. Uh, but as we promoted the event and during the event and, and after the event, we're not really talking about the game. We're telling the story. We're telling the story that we are building intergenerational connection and collaboration. We're telling the story that we're building a powerful socialization platform for older adults. We're telling the story that we're introducing social gaming and esports to a valuable and underserved demographic. We're telling the story that we are innovative first movers in something that is unique and important and will make a real difference in the lives of older adults. And then, during our event, we proved it by interviewing the winners, a mother and daughter team in which the mother just learned to play in the weeks before the tournament. They laughed and they talked about the fun of sharing this new experience. They laughed and talked about the fun of competing together. Uh, they talked about how anxious they are to be able to continue to do this even if one or the other is now a thousand miles away. We told a big story, and then we had someone like others talk about how it impacted them. Now, I want to go back to the National Senior Games because I'm trying to tie a few things together here. Take a look at this guy. This is 76-year-old Joe Johnson. We're going to have to go back because I'm having a trouble every time I push a video, but here we go. This is 76-year-old Joe Johnson. He's suffering from acute are, are from altitude sickness right now, not uncommon in Albuquerque for a flatlander from Florida. He's also got a great deal of pain in both knees, both of which had to be replaced after the event. Uh, he passed on every jump in the pole vaulting competition until everyone else was out. And then after two misses, he had a final chance to either win the national championship or to finish last. And that's what happens, folks, when you change your belief system about what's possible. How much is Growing Boulder responsible for your success today? The Growing Boulder attitude is responsible for all of it. But you don't understand. I, I had some of that already. I was just glad I found somebody that's preaching it, man. It's like, yes. <laughs> I couldn't put it in words. I didn't have the words, but I, I got the, what do you say? I drank the Kool-Aid, all right? <laughs> this, this is the national champion, Joe Johnston, Pop the floor. Badass number one. Yes, he is. Badass number one. He, you know, here's another badass, and I, and, and I mean that, you know, in, in, in the most loving way. 103-year-old Julia Hawkins, who really was the belle of the ball at the National Senior Games. And Julia became the oldest female competitor ever in a sanctioned track and field competition. This is the 60-meter dash. Everyone in the race is over 90. Julia was the oldest. Uh, she won the 100 to 104-year-old age group. Uh, and while she's always remained active, she didn't even take up track and field until she was 100. Here's an interesting thing. You know, see these, th th these ladies running. The majority of competitors in the National Senior Games never experience a fall over the age of 65. Uh, falls are what takes down most people over the age of 65. Uh, Julie is having the time of her life. She's now 104. Uh, she is hoping. Her eyes have gotten a little worse in the past year, but she's hoping she can compete in Fort Lauderdale next year. So here are all of the competitors in that race. Raise your hand if you're having fun in your 90s and 100s. So these are the stories we tell uh, because you can't change the culture without changing the conversation. And from our perspective, the conversation as it relates to aging is not about loss and limitation. It's about adaptation and accommodation. It's about possibility. It's about passion and purpose. It's about believing uh, that more is possible. It's about believing that aging is a blessing and it's something that should be celebrated. Now is not the time. I'll get it. There, there, there's something about switching uh, the way we got this set up with now this video. Is not there it comes. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. 
Now is not the time to retire from life. This is not the beginning of the end. This is the beginning of what's next. We're not made to withdraw from life as we get older. We're made to lean in, to seize each moment, to value every breath. We're made to be bold and to take risks. We're made to help others and protect the weak in our tribes. We are the most creative, fearless, selfless, passionate, compassionate, empathetic animal that has ever walked the face of the earth. We didn't choose to be all that. It chose us. It's in our DNA. It's who we are. It's time we quit suppressing it and start expressing it. Age is not a disease. It's an opportunity. Something to be grateful for and not ashamed of. Stop apologizing for growing older and be grateful that you are. The truth and the magic is this. If we can change our belief system about aging, we can change the way we age. But the mind believes, the body embraces. Always believe that the rest of your life can be the best of your life. Don't mourn what's lost. Celebrate what remains. Don't identify with limitation. Embrace possibility. Close your eyes and imagine someone who is 60, 80, or even 100. Now imagine more, a lot more. Now go make it happen. Stop growing older. Start growing bolder. I love that. I love that video, but, but now all those stock photos we no longer have to use anymore because we're making our own. Uh, you know, guys, we, we value life by the way that we live it. Uh, we value it by the choices that we make. So uh, the message to ourselves, to our families and our friends, and to our clients is to stop living on your heels and start leaning into life. Lean into the opportunity of challenge. Understand that the struggle actually is gonna make us stronger. This is a message that you guys should get faster and more fully than anyone because, as you know, you build a muscle by tearing it down. And we live in a world that delivers micro tears to our entire being every single day. Uh, so do we stop? Do we give up just because we get sore? No, we keep growing bolder. And I'm going to leave you, if I can make it roll here, with a very short but powerful video that was produced by a nonprofit in Canada. It never rolls the first time. What will your last 10 years look like? Will you be quick enough for a game of tag with your grandchild? Strong enough to embrace every moment? Will you grow old with vitality? Or get old with disease? It's time to decide. The average Canadian will spend their last 10 years in sickness. Change your future at makehealthlast.ca. I love that uh, video, same actor, split screen, showing two very different scenarios, either of which is entirely possible. And truth be told, you guys are the, are the difference. Uh, you're the ones that can make the life the one that we all want to live. Uh, my name is Mark Middleton. Uh, please check out Growing Boulder at growingbolder.com. Uh, look me up on LinkedIn or Facebook if you want to connect. And uh, if we have a few minutes, I'm happy to answer some questions, Dan, but I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk to everybody today.
Well, Mark, thanks so much. That was a fantastic way to kick off the seventh annual Functional Aging Summit. Uh, we do have time for questions. We have 15 minutes. So uh, if folks have questions, please type those in the chat or the Q&A. Um, uh, Mark, you're getting a lot of great, uh, you know, kudos, and this is what I needed to hear. Uh, Angela says, this is excellent. Will the keynote, keynote speech be included in the recording? Yes, um, I did my job. I hit the record button, um, <laughs> so it will be included with all the recordings. Uh, Jackie Backmeyer, who I think you probably met in Albuquerque, um, says, thank you so much for your motivation. I needed this kick in the pants, um, so that's that's great. Any questions? Um, we've got Mark here for 15 minutes, uh, and then we have a break from 11.15 to 11.30 Eastern time until our next four sessions kick off. Sherry says, your words are priceless. Evan Osar, great work, Mark, very inspiring. Um, MedEx and clap, clap, clap. We have quite a few Canadians in the room too. So um, Randy Bethel, thank you, Mark. I tear up with every presentation of yours that I see. Thank you for spreading the word. Um, Jackie is asking, um, curious for you to address the partnership magazine again. Um, and are there opportunities for FAI trainers in the, the growing Boulder magazine? Uh, thank you, Jackie. Uh, there absolutely are. And again, I think this is a great example of, you know, of trying to lean into the opportunity. I, I love our print magazine. Um, it's gorgeous. It feels good. It's a great brand validation piece, but, but it's expensive as hell uh, to publish. It costs more to mail it than it does to print it, uh, <laughs> which means we've got to uh, you know, sell ads for, for a whole lot of money. It, it gets to be very difficult. Um, we're making the artwork anyway, so why not just turn it into a digital thing? So, so yeah, th this is, uh, Jackie, to answer your question, uh, we're trying to get really hyper-local, which is a difficult thing to do to create a broad global message that, that, that appeals to everybody, resonates with everybody and has something for everybody no matter where they are, but still have the ability to drill down in a hyper-local sense. It's what geo-targeting allows us to do on, on social channels. So the digital digest uh, is an effort to do that. We just started this in the past four or five months. We're doing it with several of our key clients um, I said in a presentation, it doesn't take much work. Uh, you know, we will make a 42 page PDF and then for every client, we just simply come in and make a new cover uh, and, and a new insert. But managing that for a lot of clients does take work. We're not there yet, but we will be there very soon where we hope to be able to, de to, to drill down uh, to the individual trainer level so that we could give you something that, that you could send out to your clients. It would cost nothing. And again, it would help us aggregate a list of the, the kind of people that we're targeting. So, uh, you know, thank you for, for the question, Jackie. We're working on it. We're not there yet, but stay tuned. Great, great. Um, Francine, um, Mark, this is just the program I'm developing for our community. Jake Tryon, one of our speakers uh, later at the summit. Great work taking advantage and moving forward during the pandemic. Nicole, chills, chills, chills. Uh, lots of great comments here. Lisa's asking, and I've wondered about this too, because I know some of our FAI trainers are doing a cool thing. And I, I, I've got to share this idea with everybody. I know some trainers are giving your book away as the 100th session reward, right? You get to 100 sessions training with me, you get a copy of Growing Boulder. I know some people are giving it away as their welcome gift. Some give it away uh, as a bonus at 250 sessions. But Lisa's asking, can, can people bulk order your monthly magazine to include in their new member welcome boxes? So like could uh, Lisa's studio order 100 magazines or 50 magazines? Is there a way to do that? There is a way to do that. Uh, in fact, we were doing that for a while. Um, again, the, the shipping cost is expensive. So if you're asking, could we put together 60 or 70 books in a box uh, and drop ship them from the printer to a location, uh, that's entirely doable and I think would be affordable for you guys. Um, uh, so so let, 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 let me talk to the team about that, Dan, and I, can I get back to you and then you can communicate with everybody about 
how we're going to resolve that. But yeah, that's that's absolutely the magazine has gotten better and better. Uh, we we have a lot of people in the financial services industry who do exactly that. That they give it as a gift to new clients. Uh, you know, they give it annually to try to retain the clients that they have. Uh, it, it really is a differentiator. And and thank you so much. You know, for the book. Originally, it was only available on Amazon, and now we've kind of brought it in-house, and we're doing a lot of the f fulfillment uh, ourselves. So let me also, Dan, uh, and thank you, because this industry has been very receptive uh, to this book. I mean, I I've had, uh, there's a guy here in Central Florida who's created a book club out of it, where people come in and they, they read the book chapter by chapter, week by week, and it really has been instrumental in transforming you know what they're doing, but, but but here's what I'm trying to say is let me figure out uh, a deal where we could uh, bulk ship you know some books, whether it's five or ten or what people would want, and I could even personalize those if that would be of interest. So I guess what I'm trying to get to, we could figure out a way if someone wanted to say, I need ten books. Uh, here are who I would like they, them made out to. Uh, I think I'd be happy to do that. And I think we can figure out a way to do that where the cost would actually be less than on Amazon. Okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I think people would definitely be interested in that. Kim, Kim actually is even saying in the, the Q and a, I've included your book on my website resource pages. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, Jackie's right. I mean, Jackie's in Houston, huge market and we need this messaging, you know? So, I mean, I think when, when you can get something where it's, you know, targeted locally, that, was going to really make sense for a lot of our trainers. So, um, so the, here's an interesting question from an anonymous attendee. Uh, so I don't know who this is asking this. Um, uh -oh. I saw your, and I saw this and, and, um, among us is something I'm familiar with that I play with my kids and I saw your video game. Um, they're, they're asking, will the whole video gaming platform, is that not an antithesis to exercise and sort of encouraging, promoting more sitting and, and addiction to video games? I mean, what's sort of your thought on that? Well, you know, I think it's like smoking weed, you know, uh, you do too much of it and you're in trouble. Um, uh, it, it's, it's like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just being silly folks. Um, it's like anything else. We actually have a, uh, I don't, uh, Dan, I think you've done stuff with Vonda Wright, Dr. Vonda Wright, uh, who is a world renowned orthopedic surgeon. Uh, she's written multiple books on successful aging. She was the one that did the first study at the national senior games where she determined that the uh, chronological, uh, the biological age of the athletes at the National Senior Games was 23 years uh, younger than their actual chronological age. So she's really into the space. She now is the head physician for uh, our Boulder X initiative, as well as the head physician for, you know, one of these professional esports teams out of Atlanta. Uh, good gamers are athletes. Now, uh, I'm, I'm not miss understanding your question. The majority of the people that we're talking to are not professional athletes, but it has been proven uh, that the socialization benefits uh, and the, the, the cognitive uh, benefits of gaming, of doing something different are really, really valuable. Uh, if this is all you do, if you just sit on the couch and eat pizza and drink beer uh, and play games, absolutely. But it's like anything else, you know, it's common sense. Uh, it does bring value. You know, we immediately default to these gross generalizations. Uh, gaming is bad for you. Uh, it's really interesting how this is flip-flop because all of these parents that told their young kids when they were growing up, stop gaming, uh, it's terrible for you. Uh, you know, now the, the kids uh, who have jobs in the gaming industry, uh, who are doing all sorts of stuff are telling their parents, come game with me because it's good for you. Uh, and and in, in that context, it really, really is. So it's like anything else, uh, you got to handle it properly. Yeah. I mean, we saw, you know, retirement communities adding Wii bowling uh, in yeah. their facilities a long time ago, right? I mean, you can't put yeah. a bowling alley in, but you can put a, a large screen and do Wii bowling. So there's there's a lot of a lot of things you can do. So you got a lot of interest in the book bulk uh, options. So you may have okay. to, you may have to deliver on that. Several trainers yeah. <laughs> messaging me. I'm even getting texts coming in. So people are like, yeah, I want in on that book bulk deal. So um, okay. if, if that's something you can do, that would be great. So I'll, I'll get it to you later next week. So you, I know you guys are going to kind of uh, sit back after this and take a deep breath, but I'll get it to you soon. Yeah. Yeah. No rush. Um, 
You mentioned, I think, Growing Boulder Digital Digest. Is that something that's available to trainers? Is that something they can tap into? Uh, yeah, that, that's the, uh, I, I think that was Jackie's question. Um, the Digital Digest is a 42-page version of our, of our print magazine, and uh, I'm going to work on that. Okay, okay. All right, great. Well, Mark, thanks so much for opening our summit today. A um, couple of closing announcements, just so everybody knows where they need to be next. So don't stay in this room. Um, this room's going to shut down. Don't hang out here. Uh, we've got four live sessions that start at 1130 Eastern, and you can hop in there a few minutes early, um, but you go back back to the summit webpage and you have four different sessions to choose from um, and you can hop in and out of those rooms so if you accidentally hop in the wrong room no worries you can hop back out you're not stuck in there it's a zoom room meeting um, those rooms are live and they are on camera so um, you know what that means like let's not do the zoom meeting from your bathroom um, or turn your camera off so <laughs> So coming up at 1130, we've got Sumit Seth, Business Owners Paradox, How to Work on Your Business While Working in It, Mike Gelfgott and John Spence from Activate Brain and Body, The Glue, The Most Underrated Strategy to Manage Your Team, Dr. Emily Splickle of Naboso, Every Foot Tells a Story, and then Kaiser, our premier sponsor, Corey Disler and Phil Stotter, Foot and Ankle Strength and Flexibility Too Often Overlooked. So those begin live. At 11.30, we're going to be on a break here for about 15 minutes. Uh, Mark, thanks again. Uh, if folks want to connect with you, they, they see your info there, growingboulder.com, a great resource, and hit them up on LinkedIn and Facebook. Thanks again, Mark. We'll see you all in 15 minutes. Bye-bye. Thanks, Dan. Bye-bye.